Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of Vetting America. I'm here with Valerie Ellis of Action Zone. I would, uh, we're live here at the Attic Cafe in downtown Tampa. It's 500 East Kennedy Boulevard. I'd like to thank our, gets, our guests, Richard McIntyre of McIntyreFirm.com, Chris Christmistos of PodFest.us, and of course, the incredible executive producer of Vetting America, Anthony Kovic. So Valerie, let's jump right into it. All right. Let's talk a little bit about your time in the, into the, in the Army and, and what, what did that do for you in your life and, why, and how that helped get you to where you are today? Um, well, I wasn't planning on going into the Army when I did. It was just kind of a decision I made on, on, a, on a whim, um, but I don't regret any of it. Uh, I don't regret that decision or, or anything that happened in my career, you know, because I feel like um, experiences, whether positive or negative, um, if you grow from them, then you're going to make you, you know, it's going to make you a better person. Um, <clears throat> what it did for me in transition into what I'm doing now is that it, it allowed me, um, or it has allowed me to be um, resilient um, and somewhat prepared for the unexpected. Um, so it just, you know, makes it quite easy when you're an entrepreneur and you know, um, everything is kind of ebb and flow. You just never know what, what's going to come around the corner next. What, what were some of the key lessons you picked up with your time there? that you apply to mm -hmm. your, your entrepreneurial endeavors and just life in general outside of the military mm -hmm. now? Um, well, it wasn't until much later in, into my adulthood um, that I realized a comment from one of my um, high school in, um, teachers um, was, I don't know, a little bit, uh, explained me as a person and how I interact with um, others. Um, he said to me, you have a knack for pulling together um, people from all walks of life. And in that particular class, we were, uh, I was a junior, it was English, we had the um, foreign exchange student, um, anyway, we just had uh, people from different walks of life. And he was like, as soon as you came into that environment, every, everybody just came together. They started talking to one another and we were able to work on, on school projects together and, and whatnot. Um, then I went into the military, you know, was a, a first sergeant um, when I retired, and now with my work with Action Zone, um, I have this ability to f to recognize the unexpected skill sets of people, yes. and then how those skill sets can add to the bigger picture. Um, you know, like I know Adam does this, so let's hook him up with Rachel that does this, and Absolutely. it just kind of seems to work together. Absolutely. How was your transition? Did you go through any trials and tribulations? Did you have what we are now starting to refer to as, you know, post-service de depression and anything like that. You it know, seems like you just kind of jumped in and then yeah, hit the ground running. My transition, um, I mean, I had my challenges, but I think that because of uh, an issue that I recognized, thank you. Thank you, Anthony. Mm -hmm. I recognized just before um, retiring, um, helped me with, with that transition. That. Can you hear that? Yes, <laughs> can you hear loud. that outside? They are just it tearing the <laughs> they're tearing the world apart right now in Tampa. Yeah. Um, so as I was going through the TAPS program, I Ooh, recognized- the glorious TAPS program. Yeah, but I recognized that my peers in that class were all really struggling with transition mm -hmm. in the sense that they didn't know what was going to happen next or what they were to do next. You know, that it didn't really seem like um, they had a plan or those that, that did have a plan that was just so uncertain. Um, and when I retired, I wasn't married, I had zero bills, I didn't have a mortgage or a car payment, but I had planned this and it was easy for me at, at that stage, you know, being um, in my early 40s retiring, um, not married and not to worry about everybody else. So it, it's not lost on me that my situation was much different than a lot of the um, folks I was transitioning with. You know, they had adult children or spouses to be concerned with. Um, so anyway, that, thought of the people that I'd served with, struggling with transition and employment yes. and stuff, um, I immediately turned all of my energy, energy into that. So I didn't have much of a breather in taking care of people, um, so to speak. So retiring as first sergeant and then continuing to take care of and serve um, those as, that yes. you know, ser I served with. How has helping other vets in entrepreneurship assist assisted your own uh, entrepreneurial ventures. I know you have two companies, and no, three companies now with Action Zone. Right. Let's talk a little bit about your your entrepreneurial ventures. How you tied in helping vets with entrepreneurship mm -hmm. and kind of with their transitioning, and how have you created synergy in your life? 
Well, I, um, Action Zone isn't my company, but I'll talk about that in a moment. Um, with Luminary, uh, global and Luminary deployment, um, both very vastly different um, uh, businesses, um, but being in the environment of entrepreneurship education, what it's allowed me to do is, oh, I didn't know that. Let's see how I can um, implement that into my own business model. Brilliant. Um, or my husband, who's my business partner um, with Luminary Global, is uh, very knowledgeable in back, um, back in and back office um, operations. So if something comes up, I'm like, hey, did you know that we could do this as well? Or did you know that this new process is out there? Oh, or this okay. new concept is out there? So it's um, nice that my business partner is my husband and we can do a lot of pillow talk when it yes. comes to um, improve, uh, process improvement, yes. um, product improvement, service improvement, um, just by being around the, you know, the environment. Um, Action Zone uh, was started by Rosie Lee, um, George Rocco, and Donnie Nunberger. Okay. Um, Donnie and George are veteran entrepreneurs, lifelong serial entrepreneurs. Um, Rosie is the spouse of a Vietnam veteran, and together they decided that there is a, um, a hole in the marketplace, if you will, in the entrepreneurial ecosystem for an organization that um, provides entrepreneurship education and training specifically okay. for the military family unit and that is veterans, active duty, um, of course, reservists, National Guards, their spouses, and their dependent children of any age. Um, right now, it's, uh, Action Zone really is in its infancy, so the- your first cohort, right? You just started um, it, you just had yeah. your first class, correct? We did, and that was, um, that's the first class wi um, within the Veteran Florida um, grant. Okay, um, so talk to a little bit about how that uh, this class is being done, being executed. I know you guys mm -hmm. are camping this weekend. Let's talk a little bit about yeah. that as well. So um, with the Veterans Florida grant, we have a five phase program. Um, first, we took the um, cohort through the entrepreneurial um, um, mindset training. Yes. And uh, ELI mindset was, in my opinion, instrumental in, in my success in transition. It's really hard running your own business, especially after taking orders or disseminating orders for so long and having to come up with them themselves. I think right. it's very powerful what you guys are doing. Yeah, but well, with the ELI mindset, it's, it's more than teaching somebody, or it's, it's not. It's not teaching somebody the entrepreneurial mindset. It's not teaching somebody to run their own business. What it's doing is helping them discover their entrepreneurial mm -hmm. mindset. Because okay. um, there are three types of people, right? You're either an employee, which means that if you come across a problem, um, somebody else is going to fix it. You know, it's, it's not stopping my day-to-day -day activities. You know, I'm still clocking out at five o'clock, um, and they just go on with their day. Absolutely. Right? Then you've got the entrepreneur. The entrepreneur is um, somebody who recognizes a problem within the workplace, and they are like, okay, well, how do I solve this problem to make my processes more efficient? Okay. The processes for my coworkers more efficient, and um, then there's the entrepreneur. Entrepreneur, um, in my opinion, is somebody who sees a problem, um, develops or creates or recognizes a, a solution, and then they're like, ah, oh, there's a product or service that I can um, turn into a business. Absolutely. This turns into an opportunity. Um, and so that, with the uh, entrepreneurial mindset um, training, we try to help them discover like which one are those people are they? Yes. And there's no wrong answer. Mm -hmm. It's just a lot of self-discovery that comes um, through that. And for me personally, um, and which is why I had made the recommendations um, for this in the Action Zone program, is helping them transition from a military mindset to an entrepreneurial mindset, and then kind of discovering who they are. So who's Valerie? versus Bursar and Nellis. Oh, absolutely. You know? yeah. absolutely. That, was so a, that was a very difficult part of trying to figure out my path through was I didn't even know who Adam Cummings was getting out. Mm -hmm. So uh, did you did you deal with that issue yourself, trying to figure out who Valerie Ellis was outside of the military? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I remember the first time that I actually met Deshaun Hines, and he will re remind me of this frequently, that um, we, went, we had a lunch meeting, and then we're standing outside the restaurant, and the whole time I didn't realize that I was standing with my hands on my hips, which is very much a, you know, it's a leader stance. Yes. Um, it's a stance of authority, authority um, that you see many military leaders have. Um, now I don't do that, and instead of shaking hands, I hug everybody because I couldn't do that in combat boots <laughs> and camouflage, you know? Yeah. So it's, um, yeah, I mean, it, it took a while to, to, to step out of that role, um, no longer have that facade of, you know, hard ass, <laughs> you know, kind yeah. of thing, you know, in, in, your, um, 
in, in my new life as, as Valerie. Um, so then, uh, moving on, phase two of um, Action Zone Veterans Florida program is the effectuation camp, which is where I'll be heading after this. And um, my, uh, so I'm an advisor for Action Zone, I'm not actually okay. a founder. My um, advice was that um, based off of surveys that Veterans Florida had received, a lot of the uh, members of the, the cohorts, and this is statewide, they really didn't get an opportunity to get to know their team members, yes. right? Or their, the other folks in their um, cohort. Um, so I explained that um, team building events are a big deal in the military. We, we you know, we plan and, and do them all the time. So let's come up with a team building event. Um, and I was familiar with um, Florida camping charters, and you know they kind of go in and they set up the entire campsite for you, so you don't have to purchase anything or rent wow. anything. And Alex Kunkel is actually also a uh, personal chef, so he cooks all your meals. Awesome. Yeah, so um, I was like, let's go out there and do this and, and uh, have them work on a business concept with absolutely no technology. And what this is going to force them to do is actually talk to each other. That's very true. You know, yeah. and then they'll get to know each other um, more on a personal um, uh, perspective or, or personal level, but also um, know what their intel um, intellectual assets are. So for example, just like I had talked to you before the show is, you're turning into becoming this marketing guru, right? But maybe if I'm sitting in a class and someone's just talking to me for eight hours for several weeks um, at a time, I may never discover that. Yes. Um, so th that's the intent of the um, of the uh, this camp, and it, it's the effectuation camp. So Robert Blackledge from Corseline yes. is coming in to lead that um, that the program. He's uh, an incredible for us. vet. He's yeah, he's awesome. Great so we're, we're very Absolutely. excited about that. And then phase three um, goes into the actual business modeling. Um, uh, coursework uh, and so. yeah and th that's um, a, a, a program called co-starters which I absolutely love it's um, you don't need a, a, a degree or a PhD to um, be able to figure out how to develop your business model and um, validate your concept you know it just it's really grassroots um, at the everyday person's level. And um, I'm happy to be, to be certified as an um, instructor for that. During that part of the program, the Homefront Foundation also comes in. Uh, yes. Homefront Foundation is um, an organization founded by Mark and Matt Betterman, their brothers, both uh, Navy Reserve officers. And there is a trend in corporate America now to teach their executives to be storytellers or to be able to tell stories. Yes. So they've partnered with an organization that, that does that, and they now help um, veterans be able to, to um, tell their story. Being That's able incredible. to connect to their experiences, their past, put it into a, um, a form that they're comfortable with and they can articulate. So if they do happen to talk to somebody that just doesn't get it, um, they're able, you know, they. They've been able to form their thoughts. Okay. They have their yes. pitch, sort of speaking. Not using if you will. acronyms left and right. And right. Yeah. I mean, well, it's just you know being able to comfortably um, be able to articulate their experiences. So th that is part of the phase three, or I shouldn't say is that phase three, uh, three and four. Um, once they get done with uh, co-starters, then we actually take them through CEO mindset. Okay. And this. Um, portion of the program is uh, delivered by Julo Strategies. Okay. And it's c kind of um, helping them transition from that solopreneur to the entrepreneur, being the CEO of themselves, learning how to be the CEO of their company. So we take them from start to finish. And we hope, knock on wood, that they will um, be able to launch a business during that time. Yes. But that timing of launching a business is really personal, you know, it's, it's got to be um, right. So they um, may graduate from that, um, our program and not be ready to launch and that's okay. Um, our, our support afterwards is um, going to be there, you know, whether they launch or not. Yes. And that will include um, mentoring and con continued support with uh, business modeling okay. development and concept um, validation. We talked a lot about, about the end where everybody sees, but there's so much that goes into the background of getting something like, like this off the ground. Mm -hmm. but you And you and Rosie and, and their, her whole team did it in what, three or four months? You were at Action Zone off the ground and, and kind yeah, of have you your know, first cohort. They um, talked to me about their um, interest, you know, their, their idea. 
Um, and I was like, you know, do it. Uh, it why not? Mm -hmm. You know, and they all have the expertise to be able to do it. Um, and with my past experiences with working with other organizations in the Tampa area doing the same thing, um, I was happy to advise. You know, with my other businesses, I, I can't give. Um, I can't do this full time, you know, but uh, I'm happy to advise that. And it, it really, they formed late spring and got awarded the Veterans Florida grant in yeah. June. That's incredible. Yeah, um, really Rosie incredible. is a very skilled um, writer yes, she and she, you know, but, but the, you know, when you get awarded grants or when you're going after a grant, you have to pay attention to the, um, the proposal. Absolutely. You know, and, and answer, the needs of the customer specifically yeah yes and we felt so like it's we an did. art it really mm -hmm. writing grant proposals writing is, a, is an art right and rosie and i first came together we both worked um got our start with veterans florida through our employment with hillsborough community college and we've been working with the veteran florida program for several years we dealt with all the veterans that came through there um we saw them but went before they went to the training and they saw them when they were done with the training and you know the time afterwards and we just knew and recognize the things that, that were missing. And it's not necessarily because that was a bad program by, by any means, mm -hmm. but it was just, um, th more we knew that there was more that we could do. Yes. Um, and with our c community that we have here in Tampa Bay, the entrepreneurial um, ecosystem is so rich. It's so welcoming and inviting, and they just want everybody to succeed. That's a perfect know? segue, because I actually really yeah. wanted to talk oh. about why did you choose Tampa to, to get out and, and start a life? <laughs> um, and yeah. I, l I talk about entrepreneurship mm -hmm. every show and how much I love Tampa and the community. I yeah. just wanted to get your opinion of why Tampa, mm -hmm. what has the entrepreneurial community done for you and why is the veteran entrepreneurial, the entrepreneur community here so powerful and it mm -hmm. seems like it's growing daily. My choice kind of Tampa, uh, I was in the middle of Iraq at, in uh, Ramadi. Um, I was first sergeant and I was eligible for promotion to sergeant major. And I had always said, um, is because our, all were when we were in, in the military, um, I'm only going to give the Army one opportunity to promote me to sergeant major. And if they don't promote me, then, you know, I need to move on. Um, I still felt that way, but through a number of significant emotional events in my life, I, I had to just take a step back and be like, okay, really, what am I going to, what's my next step? Mm -hmm. You know, be, I found myself um, uh, single, no kids, you know, the, the uh, world was my oyster, so to speak. I could do anything, but really, what was it that I was yes. going to do? So um, I didn't get promoted to Sergeant Major that year, and I opened up um, the map of the United States and was like, where do I want to retire? Wow. I mean, I literally did this. And uh, actually, it was a Google Maps. I yeah. <laughs> New age I, map. Yeah, I didn't have yeah, uh, like, the <laughs> brand, whatever the, you know, the <laughs> so rally maps or pins. whatever. <laughs> yeah, and um, I had never been to Tampa, and I was like, this looks like a good place. I knew I wanted to be close to the ocean, didn't necessarily need to be on the ocean. Um, and I was like, you know, this is what I, where I want to retire. So I called the branch manager um, probably halfway through my tour there and I was like, you know, what are your plans for me? At that time I was, you know, 3rd Infantry Division at Fort Stewart, Georgia. Do you plan on keeping me there? Do you plan on PCSing me? You know, what, what's, what's going on? Um, where do you want to go? I'm like, well, well, I'd like to go to Europe because, or Germany because I've never been to Europe. Um, can't do that. All right. Uh, I'd go back to Hawaii if the Army going to yeah. pay me to do that. <laughs> I can't send you there. Um, I was like, okay, why are you well, even asking me then? Right. Well, and I knew because <laughs> yeah. there was only one billet there, and I knew my girlfriend, uh. Um, uh, Laura Day, sorry, Major Laura Day. Uh, <laughs> anyway, was stationed there. Um, so uh, then I was like, well, how about Central Command in Tampa? I can do that. And I was like, what? Are you kidding me? Made so that at that time, I was going to actually a Star Majors meeting, and I was always you know, smiley and whatever. I was the only f the female, so I enjoyed um, getting under the, their skins by being happy. But um, <laughs> anyways, I couldn't, um, I couldn't contain myself. And I was just like, I'm going to Tampa. So excited. Um, and then, you know, reality set in. I was like, Ugh, what if they change their mind? Because you've been told before you're going someplace and that Jeez. changes. Yeah. Um, and so anyway, when I came down for orders for Central Command, I actually called my branch manager and thanked him for keeping his word because I was shocked um, that everything... You ended up in Siberia. Yeah. So anyways, I ended up in Tampa. 
Um, absolutely loved it. Uh, loved this uh, area that you can do something different every day. Um, yeah, it just it's just an amazing city, and the weather is incredible. Um, then a couple, you know, a year and a half or two years later, then I met my now husband, um, and we've been married for a couple of years, so I have no reason to leave in that respect. But why I love Tampa and what I'm doing now as a, um, a small business owner, as an entrepreneur, and um, as somebody whose passion is helping other um, veterans um, become entrepreneurs is that I've seen this evolution in Tampa that is there, the resources in this space is just every day there seems to be a yes. new one that comes up. Um, and everybody just wants to help you. you know? They really do. Yeah, nice. I, I can't tell you how many times, hey, I, can I just schedule a call to find out what you're doing so I can see how I can help? And um, that's great, I love it. Um, you know, and then you, you're kind of like, okay, now you have to really be on top of your time blocking and your schedule to make sure that you're actually doing revenue ac um, generating yes. activities. <laughs> it's know, easy here it. to get busy being busy. It absolutely is, or busy connecting, yes. or you know, busy saying, hey, you know who you should meet? Um, but that's the, in kinda, that's the kind of supportive environment that Tampa has in the ecosystem. Um, and that is one, also one of the reasons why um, Rosie and uh, um, Action Zone, they're adamant about not um, contributing to the ecosystem, but not, not diluting it. Yes. And what I mean by that is, if somebody else is teaching a workshop uh, on, you know, uh, whatever the topic, you pick, you pick an entrepreneurial topic, why are we going to put that in our programming? You know, so we want to partner with other, um, um, entrepreneurial service organizations and you know, like the Entrepreneur Collaborative Center and organizations like that that are already teaching things so that we can add to... Community over competition. Right, absolutely. Yes. Um, and it, it, we also like to identify ourselves as an entrepreneurial service organization that actually feeds into other ESOs. So, for example, we've had conversations with you know Richard Manassi and um, uh, Rich at the, the Wave and it's like, okay, we specialize in um, the military family member that is in the ideation stage, helping them to discover their entrepreneurial mindset, helping them figure out, okay, what is my product or service that I could offer in, you know, as a business? Um, and say, let's, so let's just use the wave and say it's a tech product or okay. tech service. How do we prepare them to be able to apply for the wave? How do we prepare them Smart. to be able to um, get into one of their cohorts? So we're not, we don't want to be an incubator. We don't want to be an accelerator. We want to help um, our members get into those okay. that already exist in Tampa. That's brilliant. I really like that, that, yeah. that switch. And that's yeah. part of being an entrepreneur is seeing where the gaps are and filling them right. with mm -hmm. your passion. Mm -hmm. Would you consider yourself a community builder? And if so, why is it important, do you feel, to be a not only a part of your community, but to give back and actually help build it stronger? Um, I hope that people see me as a community builder. Um, I, people tell me, have been telling me since I was a junior in high school that I'm a natural connector. Yes. Okay, and, and so I try to um, continue to do that um, post-service because now I'm not serving just my fellow um, service members in the Army and, you know, the nation, but now I'm servic servicing my um, community. Yes. And for me, um, ever since I got to Tampa, the community just embraced me. Mm -hmm. You know, I felt embraced. I felt like I could go anywhere and there was somebody who would be willing to sit down and talk to me and educate me yes. or help me along as in my uh, transition, Absolutely. if you will. Um, and I was, I wanted to be a part of, of, of a community because in the military, I, I never had a community. You know, you're uh, other than, of course, the military, but you're moving all the all time. All the time. So, did I volunteer? Absolutely. You know, I, I, no matter where I went, I would volunteer. Maybe I'd run a 10K or a half marathon. You know, I was involved in the community, but actually being part of the fabric of the community, um, woven into the community, being able to make the community better, I, I wanted that in, you know, in retirement. And okay. Tampa let me do it. Mm -hmm. A big aspect of being an entrepreneur is mindset. Mm -hmm. So it is being a big aspect of being in the military. Mm -hmm. But sometimes those can conflict with one another. Did you have to do any type of mindset overhaul? And if so, how were you able to take some of the bad habits that worked for you in the military but that weren't working here out in civilian life? And how were you able to transcend those 
and maybe even leverage them to become strengths in your pursuits? Um, well, I, th I think I answered that question um, with the, the, the entrepreneurial mindset training. Yes. That was um, pivotal for me. Okay. You know, it, it, so I, I didn't, once I got exposed to that, mm -hmm. um, it was easy for me to be very mindful of my mind, okay. my mindset. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have those some struggles that you yes. were, you know, just um, describing. And then I had opportunity um, about three years after um, being a student of the entrepreneurial mindset um, to go through the facilitator training, okay. which just reinforced, you know, what what I had learned as a student of the um, entrepreneurial mindset training. So um, yeah, I. I encourage veterans all the time when they ask me for um, advice on um, transitioning. If they ever have an opportunity to go through any type of entrepreneurial um, training or workshop or um, conversation, take advantage of it because that entrepreneurial mindset is um, it will be very helpful in that transition. Coming from your perspective, being a leader of leaders, being a first sergeant in the army, making those choices, seeing uh, veterans and service members of all ages and ranks and files, what have you noticed out here that are some big issues with veterans in trying to establish themselves in civilian life as they did in the military life? And what would be a sage piece of advice you would give them that in case they, maybe they don't want to be an entrepreneur, maybe they, but they're still in their own way. How were you able to get out of your own way? And what would you tell someone, a, a person who's about to transition, what to look out for and how to kind of create that success for themselves out here? I think my number one advice would be failure is okay. Yes. Oh my gosh. Chase it. Yeah. Well, and, and I say that because, you know, in the military, we, um, we recognize failure in the military. Yes. We absolutely do. And they fix failure in the military with corrective actions, that we regard, you know, <laughs> depending on the different type of, or depending on the type of failure, right? Um, when you come out into the civilian sector, if you fail, really, the only person that is affected by it is you. I mean, yes, you might have family, kids, and spouse, or um, whatnot, but it's okay to fail. It's just that when you fail, you fail forward, yes. Okay, and when you fail forward, you take those lessons um, from that failure and just try to um, make the next decision better. Uh, so, you know, when I, f um, my first company, I had another company when I um, had first retired. I think I started it within, I don't know, eight or ten months, and failed miserably. Yes, and <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I did it on the way I, out, and uh, no, yeah, and uh, it wasn't. Um, I, ha I had a suspicion it would fail. Um, but I was like, okay, I'm in a financial position. Um, I have a, well, we weren't married yet, but I have a supportive husband um, who's like, just give it a try. Nice. You know? so, so I did, and, and it failed. I spent a lot of money on coffee um, <laughs> that first year with that business. But the, what I took from that is um, the things I was good at. I know that um, I learned that I'm a good relationship builder you know, um, when a client puts their trust in, in me, they truly trust me. Um, I'm a person of my word, uh, which, you know, yeah, I knew, knew, knew those, but I knew what I was really bad at when it, ca when it came to be an entrepreneur is I'm terrible at sales. I'm not a closer. Um, even though I identify myself as a um, technology nerd, I really suck at it. Like, you know, and uh, so some of those things I learned from that failure. Yes. So when we started the second business, I was like, okay, the things I'm really bad at, either I need to get training or I pay somebody else to do it, you know? And I um, hone in into onto my strengths and that has made our other businesses um, run much better, <laughs> much more successful. We're, we're about um, at the end of the show. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to give you a chance to tell the people at home how do we get in contact with you? How do we learn more about your businesses? How do we learn more about Action Zone? And mm -hmm. you're you're very well known and decorated here in in uh, the Tampa entrepreneurial ecosystem. You've won awards and things like that. I think your story is very powerful, and I think that a lot of people can learn from what you've done and where you're at in your life. So if you could share that with somebody, like how do we learn well, more about you? Um, just let me comment real quick on okay. your um, uh, comment about the recognition. Yes. That even in civilian life, even as a retiree, um, I never did anything alone. 
Of course. You know. of course. So the recognition I've had is because I've been able to successfully connect with um, like-minded people who are supportive. So yeah, it's just not me. Um, how people can get a, um, in touch with me, you know, connect with me on LinkedIn, please. That's probably the easiest yes. way, and, um, or Facebook. And then, um, you know, have all my, my business information there, but for Action Zone, actionzonetampa.com. And, um, you know, we're Action Zone Tampa on Facebook as well, and we're still taking um, applications for the next cohort, so. There's never too late. Never too late. Thank never you so late. much, Valerie. Thank I really you. appreciate yeah. you. So everyone at home, thank you again for another wonderful episode of Vetting America. We're here at the Attic Cafe, downtown Tampa, 500 East Kennedy Boulevard. One more time, I'd like to thank our sponsors, Richard McIntyre of McIntyreFirm.com, Chris Christmistos of PodFest.us, and of course, Anthony Kovic, the amazing executive producer. I hope you all have a lovely Friday. It's, been an it's another beautiful day here in Tampa, and uh, I'll see you guys next week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.